Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's our favorite time of the week one more time before 2023 comes to an end, because I've got the coolest new knives in front of me that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, we're going to start this uh, week off strong with a knife that I think is clean, elegant, very nicely designed and actually a pretty compelling value for what you get. It's not an affordable knife per se. This is the $200 Artisan Cutlery Seder, but what you get for that money I think is actually quite compelling. Like I said, super clean design. The lines on this are just tasty and tasteful. Uh, we've got a three and 3.35 inch blade of S90V steel with a full figured titanium handle. That's a lot for $200, which is a lot of money, but for $200, you are getting definitely your money's worth with this one, at least compared to the uh, what the competition typically offers. It's very, very nice. That blade, in addition to the S90V, which has an edge that is going to last a very long time indeed, you've got a broad drop point shape, suitable for bigger slicing cuts and just all around everyday usage. The handles aren't quite as broad as the blade. They taper down a little bit more in, in a little bit more of a narrow fashion, but still holds quite nicely. It's not quite a hand filling grip. And by that, I mean, there is enough length, but the thickness is not so much that it fills out the palm of your hand. This is more about more precise holds. You can still pull off those bigger cuts, but if you're spending a lot of time pushing through heavier slices, heavier cuts, this is maybe not the knife. Uh, for that sort of task. It's a little more classy, a little more elegant. We've got ball bearings in the pivot. Very clean profile when it is folded closed as well. Let's reverse flick it. That is my favorite way to open this knife. You can, of course, thumb open it with the blade cut out here, but I'm finding I'm, you know, running into that typical frame lock foible. My fingers are resting on the lock bar there and make it a little difficult to pop through the detent without really thinking about it. So if you want to open it more slowly than the reverse flick, you do the typical uh, two finger pinch to get it started and finish the thumb roll open. No problem. Other cool little details. We've got a finished pocket clip or a, a milled titanium pocket clip with the same matching diagonal finish. Those nice fine milling lines and a titanium backspacer there. No uh, lanyard position point on this. So if you're the type of person who likes to add uh, a fob or a bead or something to your folders, I can be able to do that with this one. This knife is built very well. Uh, Artisan's premium stuff uh, tends to be, and this certainly uh, maintains that tradition. The other uh, company I think that's doing a great job offering you know, higher end knives at a good value, at a good price point for what you're getting is Vosti. And we've got a new Dachshund knife right here. That's the name of it. It is a crossbar locking design, as you can see in a more premium shell than a lot of uh, crossbar locking folders are nowadays. $229 for this. Titanium handles, nice and faceted. M390 blade here, three and a quarter inches long with a, one more time, Thomas, before the end of the year. What is it? Uh, I feel like I can say that about something else. But you wouldn't say it about this? I didn't say I'd be right. Reverse Tonto. One more time, folks, you know how, uh, how much I uh, adore that uh, terminology for a blade. But here it is, whatever you want to call it, whether it's reverse Tonto or modified it, modified it. I just modified a word there <laughs> or modified sheep's foot, chisely like sheep's foot. Anyway, whatever you want to call it, it's a cool utility blade shape. Not too thick, not too thin. Good cross section of strength and slicing efficiency when combined with that full flat grind and swedge very acute yet strong tip due to the uh, geometry there. Knock out some pretty powerful feeling cuts with this knife. And a little more comfortable, a little more hand filling for me at least than the Artisan Cutler we just looked at. It's a little bit narrower and maybe a little bit thicker. Yeah, just a skosh. Uh, and that combination works well for my hand in particular. We've got a milled pocket clip. Thankfully it is reversible on this knife because I say that because the crossbar lock itself is also fully ambidextrous as I flub the, uh, the left-handed usage right there. And actually the reason I did 
is because it's not my normal hold and the front flipper tab actually got caught on my finger there, as you can see. Not really a problem for me in my right hand, which is what I'm typically using here uh, on this style of lock because I am in fact right-handed uh, and it's very natural there. But let's do the thumb studs real quick. Just fine. Let's do the front flippy. Not too bad. The other bane of my existence is the reverse Tonto front flipping knife. So it's 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 got points working against it in, in, in its favor for me personally, but you do have the crossbar. So yeah, makes me happy. <laughs> Very nice feeling design. I'm giving it a hard time. I'm, I'm being a little sarcastic here. If, uh, if you're new to this channel, I'm not uh, actually throwing shade at anything here. Just want to make that clear. You can get this also with a, uh, a black blade and black handled finish or a black finished handle with a gold thumb stud that looks pretty nice. Is there any other gold hardware on it? Or is it just, I think just the thumb stud on it. Um, and the, uh, the barrel spacers at the back. So that's a pretty cool look as well. And it feels absolutely top notch the way it's put together. Uh, next up, we have a small kind of everyday style or perhaps small hunting knife fixed blade from Vosti. This is the Mink uh, coming in at 69 bucks. Clip point blade, 3.3 inches long Nitro V blade steel that has a good amount of toughness for a smaller knife like this. That can be a good thing, uh, especially if you're using it in a hunting scenario where the edge might come in contact with bone or harder materials like that. You can protect your edge a little bit thanks to that toughness. Just like the dachshund we just looked at, good cross section between strength and slicing efficiency because the blade, again, not too thick, not too thin, but we've got a nearly full flat grind to keep that slicing efficiency feeling very nice. Uh, kind of a frag finish to the uh, micarta handle scales here gives you a little bit of extra surface area hence traction on there but it's not so much where it's pinchy or anything like that and then of course micarta when it starts to get a little wet will actually feel a little tackier as well so good on it there for again hunting scenarios specifically two sections of jimping one here under the thumb one in the kind of beginning or almost to the middle of the clip pointed section giving you good control over that as well. And you can certainly reach all the way out towards the tip. Let's say you're not a hunter though. Will this still be appealing? I think so. Good companion camp knife, either a companion to a larger knife, or if you were gonna take a, uh, a small fixed blade hiking, this wouldn't be a bad option either. It's not ultra light. It's uh, about five, just over five ounces uh, for the knife. And it comes with a Kydex sheath. That's gonna add a little bit of extra weight there also, but clicks in quite nicely. You've got the dots style attachment here, the, uh, the narrower one with just two sets of uh, vertical holes right there. Still gives you a lot of options for vertical or horizontal mounting and locks into place or clicks into place quite nicely. There you go. That is the mink. The peeling, the slicing. The and, you know, it'll do it all. It'll do it all. <laughs> it'll do all of those things. Uh, this next knife won't quite do as many of those things as intuitively. Uh, and that is due to the blade shape. This is the Griffin. This is an RS Knifeworks design, uh, who you may remember uh, created the RS Chaos, uh, the first, don't call it a compression lock knife that is uh, not Spyderco designed uh, from Vosti. It was on our uh, best of the year video just last week. Just, yeah, the Tuesday before this last one. Uh, and this is a new, new collaboration with Vosti and RS Knifeworks. More uh, affordable than that $250 knife. This is I mean, about 79 bucks. Really cool hawkbill blade. Actually, I really do like the geometry of this because you've got that recurve there that really is effective on the pull cuts, especially. It's kind of, when you do that kind of cut, it's literally pulling the material, material you're cutting into the knife itself. It, it kind of self gathers the stuff in a way. It's also less likely to slip out of a longer cut, especially if you're breaking down a lot of cardboard, that sort of thing but it's not so aggressive of a recurve that it's gonna be nearly impossible to sharpen. That is gonna be pretty manageable, I would say, for you know average use. Uh, 14C, 28 and steel. Uh, edge is not gonna last forever with something like that, but I've always said it does have some pretty respectable edge retention, especially for a non-premium steel. Uh, and it is also, like the Nitro V we just talked about, quite tough as well. Several colors can be had. Uh, you've got the black stonewashed blade and it is stonewashed, just a hint of that tumbling going on. It's very, very subtle in this case, actually. Uh, you can also get satin blades, different colors, including a uh, 
you know, standard black on the handle as well, which is G10 with that nice raised G10 ridge, we'll say. It's a backspacer there forming kind of that ridged look. Get a uh, pop of color from the side, which is kind of nice too. Let's check out the action. We've got a front flipper here too, but I'm gonna do that last. We've got a regular flipper, small tab right here, which works quite nicely and is very subtle and out of the way when opened. You've got the blade cutout, no frame lock to uh, accidentally pinch here, so thumb action works very nicely. Reverse flick also very, very good. And let's try that top flip, that front flipper there. There we go, that was a little better the second time. All right, Whew. almost nailed it. Uh, folded over pocket clip, I wouldn't say it's deep carry due to the amount sticking up here, but it is folded over. You've got inset screws, or uh, a flush mount screws and an inset pocket for the clip to sit in. Uh, what else? Oh, more interesting stuff going on with the blade. I should mention that. It is uh, compound ground in a similar fashion to the RS Chaos. Higher flat grind near most of the section, but a more robust uh, flat grind here at the back, not quite as skinny. And it's a little bit more usable space than on the RS Chaos 2. It's a small section, but if you needed to really push, you know, into a heavier, smaller cut right there at the back, it could pull that off. Um, actually, you know what? I don't want to call it a hawk bill today. It's a reverse trailing point, Thomas. I didn't say I'd be right. <laughs> Which brings us to our next knife uh, from QSP. This is the Walrus, and I'd say that has a reverse hawkbill blade, wouldn't you? Maybe. <laughs> the Walrus has a trailing point blade, folks. Uh, and this is a, in typical QSP fashion, a lot of knife at a very good price. 3.375, so three eighths, or uh, yeah, three eighths of an inch, sorry, uh, on the blade, D2 steel, full flat grind, swedge, liner lock, ball bearing pivot, G10 scales, reverse, no, standard pocket clip here, not reversible, all of that for just over $48. Got a good amount of girth to the handle there. It's gonna fill the hand quite nicely. Nice upsweep to the blade for those long, slicing cuts that's going to feel very satisfying moving through that sort of motion let's check out the action one opening method here not three like uh, like some other knives we just looked at so fewer things to get confused by maybe nice and snappy like i said tons of knife for the money 48 dollars and 50 cents actually uh the d2 steel in that price range is about as good as it gets in terms of your edge retention uh which is to say actually pretty darn good wasn't that long ago where uh, D2 typically would cost a lot more to get into. So the types of edge retention you could expect from the budget knives then versus today, quite a world of difference. You can get you know, quite more than adequate performance uh, for not a lot of money. And QSP is a one of the big reasons why. Well, since we're on the subject of uh, kind of cheekily making fun of uh, blade classifications uh, in terms of blade shapes, Let's take a look at one of our latest drops of the Microtech Borka, Bla Bork Borka Blades collaborations. Too many L's in there, I guess. This is the Stitch Auto. Before I tell you what we have on the website, what's that blade shape? Stitch Toe. This year can't end soon enough. <laughs> you could call this a lot of things. You could kind of call this a reverse Tonto. You could call it a utility blade shape, you could call it a spear point blade, which is actually what we call it on uh, the website. I'd say more than anything, it's kind of a bit more like a, a modified Warncliffe than a lot of things due to you know how narrow that tip is, how little curvature there is to the belly of the uh, sharpened edge itself. I don't know. I don't care what you call it. It's cool, doesn't, isn't it? After all. But it is kind of a heavy working blade. You can do some big cuts, you can do some precise tip work with it at the same time. You've got that finger choil here at the front. I don't even call it a finger choil because we do have a sharpening choil here in front of it. But you've got this area uh, in front of the pivot in the Ricasso area of the blade with some jimping that you can get your finger into. Call that whatever you want to call it too. This is really a knife that just defies classifications really. But you can get right up on that blade to push it real hard when you need to or use the heel very precisely when you need to or you can choke back and just stay on the handle for a little extra reach while you're cutting. That handle itself, black aluminum, 
pocket clip here at the back, Torx construction all around, and an automatic, of course. One of the, uh, the few Microtech side opening automatics. They do make a few, even if they are uh, more well known for their OTFs. And it works quite nicely indeed. Check it out, M390 steel, uh, tip to scale about three and, and five eighths of an inch long, 433 bucks at this point in time. All right, that knife was not big enough. We need a bigger knife. Fortunately, we got a new work tough to talk about. This is the Dragoth coming in about $249 right now. Now to my eye, at least, the design inspiration of this knife comes from World War II from the Fairbairn designed Smatchet fighting knife. At least that's what I see uh, when I look at it. Uh, we've got a nine inch blade. Awesome. <laughs> we've got a nine inch blade, not strictly hewing to the, uh, the Smatchet shape. It is a little more stylish. We've got the recurve section here along the, uh, the heel, which again, if you're using that section for draw cuts, it's gonna gather things in a little bit as opposed to using the big leaf shaped uh, section towards the front. It's also pretty good when choking up into the finger troil here, and I will call it a finger troil in this case, for doing finer cuts. Uh, other differences from, of course, the classic Smatchet is no sharpened rear edge, which about the half, half of the Smatchet blade would typically be sharpened on the rear. This does not have that, which means if you're using this in sort of a woodsy scenario, make it a little better uh, for batoning since you won't have an edge to dig into your baton. It is swedged there towards the back, or at least ground towards the back, uh, left too thick to put your own edge on it, uh, I would say. You wouldn't, you'd wind up with something pretty thick if you did it. Maybe you could Scandi grind the back edge. Why not? Us bushcrafters, we do some crazy things sometimes, and that's okay. Uh, but it's gonna be fun. Really, like, and this might wind up being a little too heavy for actual combat use, I'm not sure. Take that with a grain of salt, I'm not actually combat trained in the use of a Smatchet, uh, but in typical work tough fashion, it feels dang near bulletproof, it really does. Uh, SK85 is the steel, nice and tough. We've got a forward lanyard retention point here, right in front of the scale, which is gonna be very handy for looping your hand down into and holding the knife because if you slip when you're chopping, it tends to stay put, thanks to that lanyard style. I'm a big fan of that. G10 handles, this one is black with red liners. There's a few different options. Very hand filling in this case. Very hand filling indeed. You can definitely get a solid, solid grip on that. You can pinch grip on it, thanks to the, th the thumb scallops here. If you're using it in, I'd say it'd be really good in a uh, reverse grip actually. That's where I'm really finding uh, the thumb scallop usage there to, uh, to make sense, at least here behind a table. I'm not actually out using it, of course. Protruding pommel here at the back, the top of this maybe digs a little bit on me personally when I'm choking back, but it's there. You can use it to scrape with if you like, and you've got another lanyard spot there. Sheath is big old Kydex. Almost completes the, uh, the paddle look going on right there. Uh, no belt attachment hardware included, but it does have a, uh, a strap for shoulder carry, which is gonna honestly be uh, more comfortable in the long run because the weight of this knife with the sheath is just over two pounds. I know, I know uh, a lot of folks like to wear nice thick gun belts, but even at that, you might be stretching it with all the other gear you might have as well. What else? Check out the edge. Typical work tough fashion, it is convex. It is super refined. I mean, you can see the sheen coming off of that right there. And one thing you may have noticed, I just want to call out real quick, uh, the back end of it right here where you'd stick your finger, it looks like there's a little chip taken out of that blade. And that's actually intentional to remove what would other, otherwise be a pretty sharp and acute tip that could stand a chance of biting your finger when you're in there. So they essentially just kind of removed that from the equation in their shape. So there you go. That is the Dragoth. Check it out. Now on the same day uh, that the Dragoth dropped earlier this week, we also dropped a bunch of V44Xs from WorkTuff. Uh, but that brings us to kind of the disadvantage of this new Knives video only going out once a week. Uh, sometimes stuff sells out real fast like those V44Xs. Uh, so for that, make sure you're following like our Instagram and Facebook pages. Uh, there will be links to those in the description. There always are in fact. So head over there, you can follow those to make sure you don't miss some of these uh, drops that just go so fast we don't even get a chance to uh, put them on video. Uh, next up, let's keep things going. Like 
we're in, we're in like a big meaty attitude section uh, thanks to that Dragoth right here. Let's keep that going a little bit. Uh, new Heretic Hydras available right now with a very cool kind of desert tan camo style finish. $4.95 for this single action OTF, uh, which means you have to actually manually retract the blade. You can't do it with just a switch. I'll tell you why that's uh, an advantage here in a second, but first let's check out this recurved blade. Magna cut steel, very tough, very corrosion resistant and holds an edge very, very well. And you've got this nice meaty recurve shape here. Definitely not a slicer. This is left a little bit on the thicker side and you've got a stout flat grind. This is built to take a beating, not to precisely open envelopes or anything like that. Not precision slicing, brute force. And that's where a single action OTF really shines over a double action. Here is the safety cover for the button. You have to push that down to retract the blade and you basically cock it with this charging handle here at the bottom. Now, yes, this is definitely more cumbersome than just pulling a lever back, but the advantage of this is they don't have to build springs going both ways in the handle to fire the blade. All the spring power can be focused on launching the blade forward. So slide the cover to the side and bam. Fortunately, we don't have an, another OTF here to compare it to, but the sound that it gives you is definitive. It is a monstrous thwack compared to the more precision, you know, mechanism sliding into place that a double action OTF typically exhibits. Both are good, but this one just has a little bit of extra satisfaction when it slams into the open position. Very cool. Plenty of handle length there to hold on to that big brute force blade right there. Three and three, three and five eighths of an inch long in this case. Great steel, great materials, great action too. All right, let's show a few more autos now. Uh, some more side opening. We don't have any uh, more OTFs this time around. Protec. This is a new version of their godson coming in about 300 bucks. Very acute spear point profile here. Kind of a refined, just the way I always describe it, is a modernized, minimized, streamlined take on the classic Italian stiletto. Doesn't have like the big ornate quillions or anything like that, but it's got the same kind of backbone, the same kind of DNA behind it. This version, we've got a blackened blade, 154 cm, black aluminum handles, nice, warm, inviting wood inlays, olive wood in this case, actually which is pretty cool to see on this American made knife. That wood really lends it a touch of kind of upscale classiness, also bolstered by the mosaic firing button in the bolster section of the blade. Speaking of the firing button, it's gonna release this blade and it's gonna sound just like a Protec. Told you. And that is a very good thing indeed. Industry leader in the side opening automatics for sure. Very classy rendition of this knife. Uh, one of many new Protex that uh, hit the site very recently. I've got one more to show you today uh, on the video at least. And that is new version of the Magic Bolster release, the Whiskers collaboration. 320 bucks for this one. You've got the aluminum handles, rose gold, 154 cm blade, 3.1 inches. Very cool, very little, very useful little blade shape for everyday carry angles down a little bit, you're going to be able to actuate the tip a little bit more easily as a result of that. Thin enough blade steel with a higher flat grind, not a super high, but high enough. This is a great everyday slicer. Not so much a brute force thing, but a little more precision here. Deep carry pocket clip on this knife, inset with flush head screws, which is quite nice. And the trick with the whiskers is the magic bolster release. There's no firing button from the side that you can see. It's actually this bolster pivots towards the spine of the knife. Very easy to do once you know what's going on. Simply use your thumb and push that bolster back. As you can see right there, the same motion will unlock the knife. And that's a cool thing too. Might be handy if you've got, uh, you know, folks you might not want to open your knife uh, in your life. I'm not saying it's safe for kids. I'm don't, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that, but you know what I mean. Um, next up. One more side opening auto to take a look at. A uh, new version of the Launch 14 Cleaver from Kershaw. 140, just under 150 bucks for this. 
big CPM 154 blade. So it's the powder metal version of 154 CM. Edge retention should be about the same. Toughness is going to be a lot higher on this blade. So much um, even more resistant to chipping out your edge under heavier cuts. Aluminum for the back side of the handle, which is typical for the launch series. The front side is essentially a two piece handle. Bolster side that houses all of the firing mechanisms and the button and the pivot and all that is also aluminum. The back section is carbon fiber screwed together here by those uh, two screws that you can see right up front. Cool feeling in the hand. It's got enough there for a three and a half finger grip for me, I would say, but the very generous finger choil allows you to get up there for a fuller grip if you need to. But even if you chuck, choke back right around the pivot for a gorilla grip, you can do that while keeping your finger away from the edge, which is a nice thing. Speaking of the edge and the blade itself, high flat grind with an aggressive swedge on the top, not too thick on the blade steel. Slicing efficiency uh, is gonna be pretty good, or cutting efficiency, I should say, because this isn't really a slicer, even though you can slice with just about anything, but you know what I mean. Really good on those push cuts, especially though. Action, let's do it, is very good. Uh, the launch series, has always been a pretty good bargain. 150 bucks for what you're getting here is nothing to sneeze at whatsoever. Uh, it's also, however, not a small amount of money. Uh, so, which is why I'm glad to see this knife make its return. The ProLite clip point blade is back. We thought it was gone. It wasn't, it's back. Uh, and this can be had right now for just under 50 bucks. You've got the three and a half inch blade, uh, 4116 stainless, fairly basic stuff but it is backed up by the triad lock. Old reliable, does the job, one of the strongest locks on the market, lasts a long time. It you know has uh, self-adjusting angles on the inside, so it's not gonna get loose or sloppy with time the way uh, some other lockbacks can if they're used really, really extensively. But it's just super strong stuff. If I'm picking a back lock style lock, the triad lock is really very hard to argue against. It's just exceptionally good. There it is in the closed position. We've got a injection molded handle with kind of an orange peel texture. Keeps it from being slick without it being something that's going to shred up your pockets when you take it in and out. Two position pocket clip, right or left. This is a great knife for righties or lefties because of course the lock is ambidextrous. Single sided thumb stud here. It is reversible, but the backside is vestigial, we'll say. Let's see, I haven't tried opening that this time with the left Thumb, but still no problem. But you can reverse it to whichever side you use more frequently if you wish. Fantastic, just everyday utility blade. Gonna get the job done, not gonna break the blank bank. Not gonna blank the blank either. And it should be pretty darn reliable. All right, let's take a look at some a few more fixed blades as we uh, come closer to the end. One of my favorite guys in the knife industry, Dogwood Custom Knives. Of course, uh, Dan Eastland is the guy, not, his name's not Dogwood. Uh, this is his Echo Fix Blade, the Echo 4 specifically. Uh, it's essentially the same profile as the Echo 5, but the Echo 5 is custom. The Echo 4 is a mid-tech version of the Echo 5. Uh, what you've got here is an S35VN blade, just over four inches. Nice straight clip point, decent amount of belly there. It is a great size to just be an all around general purpose. Every time you head into the woods, into the bush, into the desert, away from your house, anytime you need just a general use fixed blade, hunting, even fishing, come on. This is one of those kind of ideal shapes for sure. The steel is a good choice, holds an edge, pretty decently tough as well. And of course, stainless. Thickness, we're an eighth of an inch thick high saber grind with a flat geometry. Again, perfect all around geometry, perfect all around shape. Now the blades are being machined here in the US and then the handles are being done by Mr. Eastland himself in his custom shop. So we've got a few different handle versions. This is a rattlesnake paper micarta. It's not actual rattlesnake, it's a print, uh, but it looks really good all throughout. The micarta pins are subtle while still being nice. I really like that yellow pinstripe in between the scale and the black liner there too. Very, very nice. Feels good in the hand, not too thick. If you are a fan of a, a thicker handled knife, this is gonna be a little bit small for you perhaps, 
but the comfort of it is undeniable. And if you do have smaller hands, especially, it's gonna be really, really perfect for you. Uh, the sheath is over here. Uh, is done by one of my other favorite people in the knife industry. That's Spen Stelter of JRE Industries. Nice basic leather uh, pouch style sheath that he does with a spot for a fire steel on the side. So blade, handles, sheath, everything here, made in the US to high degrees of quality. Price on it, just about $300 right now. Check it out. Uh, let's check out another similarly sized, but slightly more adventurous blade shape. This is the Custom Potami Plus from Boatwright Blade Works. Uh, this is a full custom one-off. A Little bit uh, more expensive than the dogwood we just looked at, but not by too much. 325 for this. You're getting, like that dogwood, a very exotic handle scale material here. This is actually uh, a caramel cream paper micarta. It looks, I don't think it's actually vintage, but it has that kind of vintage vibe to it, which is really nice. Red liners too. Uh, steel 52100, not going to be, uh, not going to get you that powder metallurgy performance, but it's good, tough stuff and takes a very fine, sharp edge extremely nicely. And check out that almost full height hollow grind on this harpoon style blade too. Very, very nice with a very thin geometry behind the edge too. Gets a little thicker there towards the tip. As you can see, it's uh, got that thing going on where the edge or the uh, the hollow grind basically gets thicker behind the edge as you get towards the tip and as such the standard sharpening angle is maintained and gets you that slightly more robust tip cool looking plenty of belly there to make this a great hunting knife and again a good all-around knife for outdoors pursuits too maybe not a fishing knife in this case because you know the 52100 there is definitely not stainless feels good in the hand good pinch points there uh for pinch grips, that's the word, thumb scallops for pinch grips right there. Pretty nice indeed. Uh, the sheath on these, or on this I should say, we do have a few different versions, but again, these are all one-offs. So if you like this one, don't wait too long. Carbon fiber styled Kydex sheath right here with a loop for horizontal carry right there. I haven't checked to see if it'll match up with a uh, tech lock. Let me check real quick for you folks. A uh, large tech lock doesn't look like it's gonna work. Let's try a small, do, 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 loading, loading. Small tech lock will work uh, quite nicely. So if you wanna do a uh, horizontal or vertical carry with a clipping mechanism like this, you could do that too. Uh, Cause as, as it is set up, uh, this strap is not quick removable. You have to actually unthread your belt to get it on and off cause there's no snap on the end. Next up, a fixed, defensive blade, I would say. Uh, not quite a karambit due to its shape. Maybe it's a reverse karambit blade shape, huh? Do we, do we think about that? We're just reversing blade shapes all day today. So let's see, what else can we uh, can we give a hard time because of this? Would, uh, would the dogwood be a reverse Tonto? Yes. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Actually, the Prolite would be a reverse Tonto, I think. Mm. Yeah? Okay, that's good television, folks. <laughs> this is the Mantis, Mantis Sabot, or Sabot, it would be, the, I guess, the French pronunciation. Sabot 3, or Sabot 3, whatever you want to call it. About 90 bucks for these. You've got a just over two and a half inch blade of M390 steel with the upswept tip coming to a very, very acute point right there, and several handle and blade finishes to choose from, including a, uh, a red blade, which is not a trainer in this case, actually. In terms of the feel in the hand, it's not quite fit for uh, for my slightly larger than average hands. Uh, so if you have larger hands uh, like that or even bigger, not going to be a pinky ring for you. But the middle finger, uh, ring finger ring. Hey, maybe that's why they call it a ring finger. No. Caring bit. Caring bit. That might work a little better for you. Um, say this is probably a little better for smaller handed folks. Yeah. The, uh, the running gag here on the channel is I do have slightly larger than average hands. I wear either a large or extra large glove, depending on brand. And for me, with the pinky in there, the uh, finger groove here, the way it's set up doesn't quite match up with my finger sizes. But again, if I think if you're dealing with smaller digits, it might go a little bit more nicely for you. Edge itself on the knife feels plenty sharp. Uh, we've got a Kydex sheath for this. 
and it is set up with a clip right there. This looks a lot like some of those uh, Mummert titanium clips, but I don't see any Mummert branding on it. Uh, so it's probably not exactly that, but it, again, something similar. And as you can see from the slot here, work on a lot of different uh, hole patterns or hole spacings for you too. But this is gonna be set up very nicely to carry inside the waistband on the right hand side. So you can go in and grab with your index finger in that ring and pull the knife that way in a reverse grip in that case, or in that way, the sharpened edge is facing out when you deploy it. So there you go. Nice little defensive blade, not too expensive for an M390 fixed blade, quite honestly. Uh, and US made too, which is pretty cool. All right, how about something that just exists to be cool? That is this, the Blackside Customs Phase 7 SDM. Uh, it's based on their flagship Phase 7 dagger. The SDM stands for size does not matter in this case. Sure, four and a half inch blade, double edged, dagger ground, magna cut steel with a laser, it looks like laser engraved anyway, a laser engraved Beskar style finish on it, complete with a little imperial emblem there right near the heel. Handles themselves are milled brass. You've got a very fine diamond, diamond texture standing out in addition to the logo. Definitely feel the weight of that brass in the hand, but the actual ergonomics of the shape feel quite good, even though they are flat the hand orients quite nicely, bringing that into the correct orientation for deploying this double-edged blade. And it's perfectly symmetrical either way. So you can just grab it, pick it up, and know exactly where the uh, sharp bits of the knife are pointed. Very, very cool knife. Uh, the sheath is Kydex. Comes with a really cool little plate here in between two of the holes on the top side uh, that also bears the logo. Uh, you will have to bring your own belt attachment hardware if you wish though, but a large tech lock will fit the bottom holes here, no problem. And last but not least, we've got the RMJ Kestrel Feather Tomahawk. Very cool. Like when you think tactical tomahawks, or at least when I do, RMJ is like the first company I think of because they do absolutely stellar work. The stuff is awesome, it works well. And the Kestrel Feather is lighter than the standard Kestrel. Uh, it is coming in at one pound, 1.5 ounces compared to one pound, 11 ounces for the standard version. So it's gonna move a little bit quicker, uh, which is gonna make up uh, a little bit for that reduction in mass. That velocity is gonna make that up when you go to actually swing the blade or swing the head a little bit. The steel is 80 CRV2, Austrian made stuff and very tough stuff as well. Very well suited for a you know hack and slash type of device like this. Several edges, you've got the leading edge on the front there, sharpened beard on the underside for hooking over things. And then of course the spike pole at the back is also sharpened. This one has a black G10 fluted handle. Fluted? No, flutes would be kind of more going. One of the woodwinds. This one has a set of black G10 handle scales bolted on with the diagonal milling, giving you extra surface area for grip there. And then of course, Typical RMJ fashion, you've got a high quality leather sheath there. Bottom, thank you, Thomas. Kydex sheath there, uh, bottom ejecting with a retention snap with a pull the dot snap on it, which is always a cool thing to see. It only comes loose in one direction, pull it from the side, it's not gonna snag and pop open on you. All right, that's it for today, folks. The last New Knives episode of 2023. Thanks again for another successful year. Stay tuned uh, on Saturday on New Year's Eve. Seth and I will be uh, bringing you uh, our top five personal pickups of the year. It's always a fun thing to look back on uh, and you guys seem to enjoy it too. So we're, uh, we're gonna keep doing that. That'll be posting on Saturday in place of our regular FAQ segment. Uh, but in the meantime, let me know what you thought of these knives. And if you want to get your hands on any of them, click the links in the description to take you to knifecenter.com where don't forget about our long running knife rewards program. What it basically means is you get to earn free money on a future knife when you buy one of these today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. Happy New Year, everyone. See you next time.